Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God, for being the God, hallelujah, because blessed are you, our Lord God. God of this universe, Lord God, God, we thank you today, God. We give honor to you today, God. We ask you, Lord God, that you will come and see about us, Lord God, that you will come into the service, God, and see the needs of the people, Lord God. Oh, God, we're thanking you on today, Lord God, that one, Lord God, that just need a touch from you Jesus yes. Lord God oh God that you will come in the midst of them Lord God in the name of Jesus Lord God that just as they are expecting you Lord God that you will come into the expect expectation of the man or the woman on today Lord yes. God oh God we thank you for blessing the service on today God we thank you Lord God for the man of God Lord God it's going to deliver the word on today Lord yes. God oh God you said that your word is set out God to do that thing that you already set it out to do, Lord God. To compel man to come, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. We pray that every heart is open to receive. Every ear is open to hear, Lord God. And Lord God, that we will make application in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we'll have a song by our heart. Everything I do, I keep on leaning on the Lord. Everything I do, I keep on leaning on the Lord. Everything I do, I keep on leaning on the Lord. I keep on leaning, keep on.
Amen. He's coming back. Amen. He's coming back. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm in expectation. He is coming back. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. At this time, we will get ready for our welcome following our announcement. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Smith Chapel Free Will, original Free Will Baptist Church. Um, as I was um, driving the other day, and um, God dealt with me the word thank you. And um, I looked it up, what it means is it's like expression of gratitude and everything. So um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, ushers, for standing at the door being gatekeepers. Thank you, deacons, for doing your job as deacons. Thank you, mothers of this church, for helping us and guiding us and leading us as young women. Thank you, elders, for always, always having Bishop Claggers back, praying for the church, and praying for the um, world and doing what you do in the community. Thank you, choir, for always singing so beautifully songs of Zion. Thank you, musicians for all you do. Thank you, congregation, for what you do and stuff. So I just want to simply say thank you, thank you, and thank you. And thank you, First Lady Dora Clarida. She's out here in the thing. We love you. I love you. <laughs> Our bishop is in the back, Bishop Fred Clarida Sr. And first daughter, Christina, and baby Nate. Also, also, their son, Fred Jr., and their daughter in love, Zerovia. Thank you, thank you, thank you from Smith Chapel, Free Will, original Free Will Baptist Church. Good morning, everyone. like you want to this morning. So um, we do have a few announcements that will be coming forth this morning. I'm going to try to get um, everything that's coming up quickly so you will know about those things. There's other things that are coming up. We have a lot of things scheduled over the next few months, but I'm going to give you the most um, important and up-to-date right now. So if you need to, please take out your pencil and paper and write these things down so you, if you can't be it at all of them, you won't miss them all. Amen. Um, first announcement is, um, is basically a reminder. Today is the last day for all college students um, to turn in their scholarship applications to the Education Committee. Today is the last day. If you have not done so, today is it. Um, Elder Greg Williams will be um, preaching on the, um, I think it's the church anniversary, yeah, the second church anniversary of God's True Word Ministry, um, UHC in Graham, North Carolina. That is Pastor Elder Dalvin Torres' church. That will be on July the 28th at 11 a.m. service. If you cannot be with him, please pray for him. All right, we have um, on our announcement card, we know that our pastor's anniversary is coming up. And uh, that's so just in a couple of weeks. So please be mindful of that. Um, also, our youth day service will be next Sunday. Next Sunday, our youth day service will be next Sunday. Please come and support our children. Let them know that you love them. Um, and that's the regular morning service. And that's all I know on that. Where is he? Anybody? Okay. That's all I know about that one. Um, also, coming up, there's um, our district union is the... 9th and 10th of August, and it will be at Star of Hope in Sanford. We are need, in need of delegates for the union, for the district union. If you are interested in being a delegate, please see myself or Sister Maddie as soon as possible. We would appreciate it. And on our announcement card, Pastor will be preaching at quite a few appointments coming up. 
So please be mindful of that and take a look at that announcement card so you'll know where he's going and if you'll be needed to be there. Well, he, he would love to have all of us there, but if you can make any of them, please do so. As far as our marriage um, retreat, annual mar marriage conference, um, it will be in January 2025. If you plan on going, um, please see Sister Felicia and let her know. She did leave some announcements on that. So the room accommodations are king and queen size beds. Two night stays are um, $360. The three night stay um, is $470. That's including dinner on that Saturday. And also, if you do not plan on staying, um, it's gonna be at the courtyard by Marriott. If you do not plan on staying at our um, hotel, the cost is a little different. It'll be different. It'll be $140, um, and you need to put in a $50 deposit by the 31st, or is it, I mean, the 31st of this month, by the end of this month. Also, save the date. Our Smith Chapel youth will be having their back to school event on August the 3rd at 11, at 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, guests. They have guest speaker, food, fun, activities, free school supplies, um, but the students must be present to receive the items. Um, quick reminder for our women's retreat for next year, um, we still need, um, if you are planning on attending, we still need you to let one of us know by the end of this month so we can move forward with our plans. We do know that our date will change, but we will let you know what that will be. We are asking if you can please stay mindful of our homecoming that's coming up in September so you can start paying now on your assessments and give, get with your team leader and turn in anything that you have that you would like to turn in before September. I think that concludes our announcements for the day. Did I miss anybody, miss anything? All hearts and minds clear? Amen. Amen. It's offering time. Amen. Amen. It's offering time. Amen. The trustees will come up. And immediately after offering, the education committee will come. No.
breakthrough. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God, we thank you because we do serve a God of breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's not dead. He is very much alive. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I stand before you and I stand and tell you that there's a word that's going to come in this house on today. Amen. Amen. And before the word comes, we just make it the atmosphere conducive for the word of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he do inhabit the praises of his people. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It's a place where he loves to live. He loves to live. Hallelujah. And those that worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, when you live a life of worship, that's when God tells you all about yourself. Hallelujah. When you live a life of worship, that's when you can check yourself. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I always say that when you go down and worship, you don't go down seeing how sis is or how brother is. I see just how Katina is. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why we worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So at this time, we're getting ready for the word of God. Amen. Amen. So I stand to introduce to you none other than our bishop. Hallelujah. Amen. Most, I believe everybody here knows him, but if you don't, our bishop is um, Bishop Fred Clarida. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. He will do none other but come and deliver the word of God. Hallelujah. He will stand in the authority that God has given him. Hallelujah. He will give you nothing else but the word. A word that you can make application to. Amen. That you can apply to your life and you see results from it. Oh my God. I don't know anything else that we can apply to our life and we get a good return. Hallelujah. It don't bounce. Hallelujah. It's not insufficient. Hallelujah. But the word is good and the word is right. Hallelujah. Glory. To the word of God. Hallelujah. So I would say, preach, Pastor, and receive the word of God today. Hallelujah. After we will have a song, we will receive none other than our bishop. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you.
give us about two more minutes of thank you. Two, two more minutes, two more minutes of thank you. And now here's what I want you to do. I want the audience to do something. If you are thankful, and if you want to thank him for all he has done for you, you ought to be able to say something, wave your hand, do something to show God that you thank him for what he's done for you. Us to where we are in the service. Amen. 
Amen. We thank God for the preachers that sit with us, Elder Barnes and those in the audience, Elder Ganey, Elder Greg, Amen, Elder Angela Barnes. We thank God for them in the audience, Amen. We keep Elder uh, Elder Ruiz with her husband this morning at to preach somewhere, so we bless God for her, Amen. Thank God for our musicians blessing us on today, and our senior choir blessing us. Thank you, senior choir. Thank you, Senior Choir, for blessing us on today. It's good to have saints that have been through some stuff that are willing to sing for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. If we live long enough, guess what? Amen. You, we're going to become seniors also. Most of us on the verge. <laughs> Amen. We, we, all, we, we fall either way. We'll be right there in it, right? Amen. But we thank God for the Senior Choir. Thank God for our ushers. Our sound team, amen, our deacons and mothers, everyone in the house of the Lord, it's good to be here, amen, on the Lord's day. Amen, I just think it's good to be in the Lord's house on the Lord's day. Amen. amen. You got six days a week to be in your house. Y'all hear me? You got six days a week to be in your house. On the seventh day, come to the Lord's house. Amen. So that way he take care of your house. Amen, amen, amen. Thank God for um, a beautiful wife, First Lady Clarita, amen, and little Nathan, he's back there somewhere, amen, bless God for Nathan being with us on today, and amen, we just thank God for all of you, and we do want to excuse our young people now, you can go out for Children's Church, ages 5 to 11, you are excused for Children's Church, amen, let's bless God for the children, Amen. God bless you, children. God bless you, children. God bless you. Amen. Good to have young people in the house of the Lord. Amen. We know Jesus loves them. Amen. And we love them too. Thank God for the parents and the grandparents, uh, transporters. Amen. Anyone who uh, helped to get a child here, we appreciate you or making an investment in a child's life. Amen. The choir said, Jesus loved the little children of the world. Red, yellow, black, and white, they are precious in his sight. And we know they are. Amen. Hey, but we're going to get into the word. I do want to make a few uh, remarks before I get into the word. Continue to keep Brother Cole and the Cole family in our prayers. His brother was memorialized on yesterday here at uh, the Outreach Center. And uh, so let's keep him in our prayers, his family, because they, they've had quite a few deaths in that family in the last few months. Two of his nephews uh, have died probably in the last two months. So they, they suffered great loss. Uh, one of the, his brothers lost, uh, of course, his brother most recently, and then his son prior to that. So let's just be in prayer for them. We've all sat in those seats and we know what it's like. But we believe the prayers of the righteous still avail it much. Amen? Amen. Don't forget the back to school event. Uh, bring those items and you need them by the next Sunday because they're going to need to decide what they need to get. So please bring those items in for the back to school uh, event taking place on the first Saturday in August. Nursing home ministry will be the day after service at uh, the nursing home, so if you can go, please go and, and support. We're gonna go and serve communion with Mother, uh, to, for, to Mother Lynn today and to Sister Cora. Uh, so uh, please pray for them, keep them in your prayers also. Amen, let's get into the word of the Lord today. First um, Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10. Can you rest on your feet if you will? First Corinthians chapter 10, going to read verses 5 and 6, and then we're going to read verse 11 and 12, or 12 and 13 together. We're going to read verses 12 and 13 together. I'm going to read verses 5 and 6. Thank God for any guests that we may have with us on today. Amen. If you've been more than, you know, one or two times, we don't call you guests anymore. You're just part of the family. Amen. You just don't know it, but you are. All right. This stuff from the word of the Lord, from the King James Version, reads on this wise, But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples. To the intent, we should not lust after evil things 
as they also lusted. Verse 12 and 13, let's read together. Ready to read. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Amen. Thank you. Pray with us. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this preaching moment. And Father God, we ask you now to have your way in this service. I pray, God, that you would use me for your glory. And I pray, God, that no limitation of mine would hinder your word from going forth. Have your way, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray now, God, that souls would be saved. And I pray, God, that the body of Christ will be strengthened by the preaching of your word and lives will be rededicated. Have your way now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. We do pray for those that may be traveling out of town, wherever the case may be. We pray uh, that things be well with them. Amen. For our time together uh, today, I want to preach from the subject, be mindful. Amen. Be mindful. I want you to look at someone and say, be mindful. Look at somebody else and say, be mindful. be mindful. And one more time, let's say it together. Be mindful. Amen. 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 As we examine our text uh, today, I believe that we will find several things that God's word is telling us that we need to be mindful of. Amen. There are some things in God's word that, that God is trying to call our attention to and he wants us to particularly pay careful attention to. You need, to be, you need to be mindful, number one, of others' pitfalls. Amen. You need to be mindful of others' pitfalls. You need to be mindful of your proclivities. Lord have mercy. Proclivities. Got it all messed up. Your proclivities. And you need to be mindful of God's provision. Amen. Those three things we want to deal with today. Tell your neighbor you need to be mindful. Amen. Amen. This message today is it's not just for some of you. Amen. But as all messages in Elder Gray, it's for all of us. Amen. 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 Nobody gets left out. Everybody can eat from God's table. Amen. And it would do us all well to take heed to the word of God. Take heed to what God is saying to us. There is probably no better person, no one better able to pen these words in this message than the Apostle Paul himself. How many know that one of Satan's uh, biggest desires is to cause you and I to go back to our old life? How many know that? That Satan desires to take you back. Y'all hear what I said? He wants to take you back. And I mean that in every sense of the word, he wants to take you back. Amen. Can I demonstrate that to you? Stand up, Elder Barnes. <laughs> Stand up, Elder Moses. I want you to see what Satan is trying to do. Satan wants to do this. He wants to take you back to him. He doesn't want you to be out there in God's hand. He wants to pull you back to him, okay? And then the other thing that Satan wants to do, you can go back, Elder Moses. Satan wants to do this. He knows where you used to be. Tim, he knows that you used to be right here in a bad place. And what Satan wants to do is he wants to take you back to that bad place that you used to be in. You know that place I'm talking about where you would cuss folks out for looking at you wrong? You know, Brother Doug? Y'all know Brother Doug back there. Y'all know how. Y'all know him before he got saved. But I did. You had your hands full. Amen. Amen. Satan wants to take you back to where you used to be. He knows where God has brought you. And he knows, he knows, Sierra, Satan knows this, baby girl. He knows where God is taking you. 
So it's his job, Hilton, to pull you back, take you back to where he used to be. That's what he desires to do. How many know that today? Yeah. Amy Delamar talked about it this morning in Sunday school. Oh, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all to come to Sunday school. Y'all to come to Sunday school. You missed it this morning. Bill Barnes talked about it, how that this brother, amen, they laid him out. They put some cussing on him. Amen. And he talked about how he just looked at the brother. <laughs> amen. I don't know what's going on in his mind, I tell you. There was a war between the spirit and the flesh. His flesh was saying, go lay hands on him. His flesh was saying, you ain't got no oil, leave him alone. <laughs> Amen. But that's what the devil wants to do. He, he knows that old man. He knows the old man that you used to be, the old way you used to think and the old way you used to do. He wants you back. Yes, he realizes. He realizes what God has done in you and in your life. Satan is not blind. He sees how that God has delivered you from the things that once had you bound. Amen. And Satan will use every trick, every weapon that he, that he has to cause you and I to relapse. Do y'all know what relapsing is? Now, for those that, you know, uh, uh, that do drugs or have ever done drugs, they say that if you've ever been addicted to drugs, and once you come off of that addiction, that if you're not very careful, you're likely to go back into relapse. That means yo, you go back to where you used to be. Yes, that's that's the danger that we all live in. Yes, yes. And and no notice, as long as we live in this fallen world, we will always have to contend. With the forces of darkness and evil. Jesus said you are in this world. But not of this world. That means you can't escape what's going on in the world. You cannot isolate yourself. From the evil that's going on in and around you. But you don't have to allow yourself. To become a part of the sin of this world. Are y'all listening to me? Yes. Peter reminds us. Peter the apostle Peter. Peter reminds us that we are God's children and that we have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. But that does not call Satan to take his eyes off of us. Amen. Peter admonishes, admonishes us in chapter 5 to be sober, to be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. He is trying to destroy you. He wants to destroy the anointing in your life, the call in your life, the walk in your life. He wants to destroy your testimony. Yes. And I believe that the Apostle Peter and the Apostle Paul were saying the same thing. I believe that they were saying, be mindful. To be mindful means to be aware of. To pay careful attention to. To be on the lookout for it. You know how when you talk to your children when they were younger and you would tell them, uh, so give them instructions. And then, you know, what, you know, those famous words. Did you hear what I say? You, you know, they, you're talking right to them. But you turn around and say, uh, now you do this. Did you hear what I said? You want to make absolutely sure that there is no misunderstanding in what was communicated. And God is saying today, I want to make sure there's no misunderstanding in what I'm saying to you. I want you to understand my word. Amen. Now is not the time for you and I to get careless and relax. But we must always be on alert. We must always be aware of the environment that we're in. How many know that we live in dangerous times? Yes, yes. You can get killed at the grocery store. We're living in dangerous times. Amen. You've got to be careful when you go to the ATM, ATM machine. Amen. When I go to the, the ATM machine, I try to go during the daytime, but sometimes I go at night to those, that, that, you know, the one they have in the food line, the standalone ATM machine, cash points. And, and, and what I do when I go to at night, I drive around the ATM machine. I want to make sure ain't no joker hiding behind the on the other side. Amen. Amen. And then I get my money and I leave. <laughs> we're living in dangerous times. We're, we're living in, 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 in perilous times. And we've got to.
to be aware of what's going on around us. We cannot hide our heads in the sand like we're not aware because the Bible says that we're not ignorant of his devices. We know the tricks of the devil. We know the tactics that he used and we're not ignorant of that. But we've got to use our spiritual senses. The Apostle Paul, he writes to the church at Corinth. And all of the churches that Paul visited and wrote and, 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 and wrote to, I believe that Corinth was probably one of the worst. Amen. Corinth had their share of problems. Amen. Corinth was not only a, a large city, but because it was a large city, it had a large seaport. And, and because of that, it made it easy for, for, for uh, 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 people to transport goods in and out of the city. And guess what? Whenever you have a large population, whether it's a large school, whether it's a large church, whatever it is that's extremely large, guess what you're also going to have? Large problems. Yeah, yeah. Thank God for the small church. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We know Corinth, Corinth, what, it, it had people that were coming in and people going out. Amen. They were uh, tra traveling by boat. And, and so they came in and brought their merchandise. And when they sold their merchandise, they hung around for a while. And guess what? Those folks that came in and came out, when they came, they did not only come with their merchandise, but they came with their own God. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. Amen. They brought not only their families, but they brought their gods with them. Paul lets them know that their fathers, the ones who Moses led up out of Egypt, that they were all under the cloud. Amen. They were under God's divine protection. The cloud hid them from their enemies during the daytime. But it also led them on their way during the night. Paul wants them to know that although they may be the Jews, they may be God, the Israelites, God's chosen people, that God uh, would not and it did not stop God from dealing with those who came up out of Egypt and committed sin against God. It doesn't matter who you are. If you sin, it is sin. Doesn't matter who your family members are. If you sin, it is still sin. God does not give passes because of our genealogy. Amen. If you mess up, God knows you messed up. Look at what he says in verse 5 and 6. Amen. It says, but with many of them, God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples. To the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. This wilderness experience that they face ought to cause each of us today to be mindful of others' pitfalls. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, you better watch out for others' pitfalls. <laughs> Amen. We ought to learn from others' pitfalls. Yeah. The Bible tells us that if the blind lead the blind, they both fall in the ditch. You better be careful of other folks and what they're doing around you. Let us not be blind, but let us clearly see what happened to God's chosen people. Y'all remember how that the children of Israel had been in bondage for over 400 years. They were locked down and, and oppressed by the hands of Pharaoh. And, and they began to cry out to God. And I, I believe for 400 years, they cried out to God. I don't believe they waited to the 400th year and said, let's cry out to God. But they cried out to God. And during that time, the Bible says, by reason of their affliction, God heard their cry. In other words, God, in his own sovereignty, in his own time, God decided it was time to move on behalf of his people. It looks like sometimes that God's promises are not going to come to pass. Sometimes it looks like that God told you a thing, but it died in the wilderness. Sometimes it looked like God made you a promise, but it drowned in the ocean. But I want you to know God is bigger than the wilderness and bigger than the ocean. If God said a thing, he's not a man that he should lie. Yes, yes, God wanted them to know that I am God Almighty. I can bring you out of whatever you get yourself in. 
Notice they got themselves in some stuff. Yeah. And now because God had promised Abraham, I will make you the father of many nations. I will make your seed as the sand on the shore side. I will make your seed as the stars in the sky. God is telling Abraham, this is what I'm going to do, Abraham, because you believed me. Not because you were so righteous, but because you believed, Abraham, that I was able to do what I said I could do. You believed me, Abraham, when your wife was barren and she could not bring forth a child. And I promise you, Abraham, that you would have a seed after your own name. I want you to know, Abraham, I gave you my word. And you didn't stagger at the promises of God. But you believe what I said. And now God, it looked like God may have forgotten about them. But now God is bringing this thing to pass. And now y'all, they are They've been brought out of the out of Egypt now. And now they're out there following behind Moses. But yet they were out there and God was sustaining them. The Bible lets us know that their shoes did not wear out. Because God was with them. How many know God is able to keep you? He's able to keep you from falling. Yes, he is. He's able to keep you from the evil one. I'm glad about that today. And the Bible lets me know that they were in the wilderness doing like some of us sometimes. They began committing all kinds of sin. Yes, they did. They began lusting after the wrong thing. They began fornicating. The text said that the people sat down to eat and drink. But they rose up to play. They eat and they got their belly full. And now their belly is full. Now they got another appetite. It ain't an appetite for food. But it's an appetite for sin. How many know you don't need to have an appetite for sin. But have an appetite for righteousness. And holiness. Yeah. And the Bible said that they began to create their own gods. They forgot about the God that brought them. The God that delivered them. They forgot about him. And they made their own gods. And God was not pleased with that. You better be mindful of other folks' pitfalls. That'll let you know that the devil is setting traps. And some folks have fallen in the trap of the devil. Some folks have been caught in the snares of the devil. But how many know that you ain't got to fall in that trap? You ain't got to stay in that place. But God has called you out. God has called you out and gave you authority to walk in that anointing. Walk in the place that God told you to walk. You ain't got to play with this thing, but walk in the authority and the anointing. If God said you the head, don't walk around with your head between your legs, but lift up your head. Oh, ye gates, and the king of glory will come in. Y'all gonna help me preach about the king of glory. Who is, who is the king of glory? He is the Lord, strong and mighty. Oh, yeah, I want you to know the Bible says that one shall fall at the side and 10,000, but it shall not come nigh unto thee. They that put their trust in the Lord, God will take care of you. Be mindful of others' pitfalls. I didn't say laugh at them. I didn't say pick on them. I just said be mindful. Be mindful of others' pitfalls. Do what verse 12 says. Wherefore let him that thinketh that he standeth take heed lest he fall. I want to read that again. Wherefore let him you, 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 and me. That thinketh he standeth. Take heed. Lest he 
default. The second thing that we need to be mindful of is your proclivities. That's it. It's not that hard to say. I just, I just twisted it up. Your proclivities. Verse 12 reads like this in the Living Bible. It says, so be careful. If you're thinking, oh, I would never behave like that. Let this be a warning to you, for you too may fall into sin. Proclivities, Sister Edna, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> are best defined as a tendency to chose or to do something regularly, an inclination or predisposition toward a particular thing. Your proclivities are those things, Sister Ed, that come natural to you. Those things that, 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 that are not hard for you to do. How many know that you have a natural tendency? There are some things that you can just naturally do. I didn't say spirits. I said naturally. Talking about the natural man. Yes, yes. Your, 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 your flesh now. Your flesh has a natural tendency to sin. Y'all don't believe that, do you? Y'all don't believe it. Y'all don't believe it. Y'all don't believe it. No. You good and saying, no, Pastor, I ain't gonna sin like the rest of them. That's what you done is. I heard you, I heard you, I heard you, I heard you. But now, now let me tell you something. Let me tell you something now. This this young lady right here in the green. Tell me your name again, baby. Nicole. 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 I've observed her. She's, she's very quiet. Quiet lady. Don't seem like she raised a lot of cane. And I ain't talking about sugar cane either. I don't believe she raised a lot of cane. But let me help you now. As nice, <laughs> as quiet, as cautious as Nicole is. Now, if you don't believe me, don't, don't try it. Don't try it. Don't try it. Do not try this. But if you accidentally slap Nicole, I believe you don't catch her right. As quiet as she is, it's a natural reflux. Reflex. You know, you know. Come, come in, Nicole. Come in, come in, Nicole. Come in, Nicole. Come in, Nicole. Come in, Nicole. Come in, come in, come in. I, I'm going to show you now. We ain't going to really touch each other, but I'm just going to show you how it works. Now, I'm going to pretend I'm going to be Nicole, and she's going to be me, and she's going to just take her hand and come like that. She ain't going to touch me. Just come like that. Now, I'm, now don't get it. She ain't going to touch me. Now, she's going to come like this. Now, y'all, she on camera, so she ain't going to touch me. She's going to come. That's why I brought her out here now. Over there, she might have laid me out. But I brought her up here in front of the camera, so she ain't going to act up in front of the camera. But I want you to take your hand like that. Now, now I'm going to show you what, now, what this is. This is what Nicole, I'm, I'm going to show you what Nicole would do. I'm going to pretend I'm Nicole. Why good? Y'all see that? Y'all see that? Do it again. You see that? It's a natural thing. It's, I ain't talking about hell. It's just a natural thing. <laughs> that, you know, when you mess around and slap somebody, they're going to come back before they know it. You know, yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's, you know, it's natural, Tim. You know, you ain't got to think about it. You ain't got to give it a lot of thought. Matter of fact, most times you don't even think about it. You know how some of them words come out your mouth? And you be like, I thought I would deliver from that. <laughs> That's one thing you ain't been delivered from. You know, so so I'm just telling you that it's it's a, it's we gotta watch and be mindful of our proclivities. That's why Paul said. Like this. No, no, notice this. Let me before I get before I get it. Your flesh is always pulling on you. How many know that? Yes. If you be honest, and you should be, you know, when people say, uh, "If I can be honest," well, you ought to be honest all the time. If I can, but what you what what you be doing all the other time? But anyway, 
All right, anyway, truth be told, some of us may have dealt with some things this morning that were pulling on you, pulling you away, pulling you back to where you used to be. It could be something you enjoy, but it's pulling at you. God has, look, some, some folks, some Christians are like this. Now, can y'all see this? Can everybody see this? Some Christians like this. You know what I'm saying? Look, y'all see what I'm saying? They got one foot on solid ground. <laughs> the other foot on shaky ground. You know, so they be wobbling, you know. Lord, help me to stand. Help me to stand, Lord. I feel like I'm falling. Help me, Lord. Because they, they, they struggling. Because the world is pulling them one way. Satan is pulling hard on them one way. But the Spirit of God is pulling them another way. Amen. That's what's happening in reality. Yes, yes, that's what's happening. And that's why Paul said, Oh, wretched man that I am. The Apostle Paul now. He said, Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Paul knew that, and that saying, that saying Paul said, that in me dwelleth no good thing. In my, notice what he said, he said, in my flesh, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Because Elder Barnes had listened to his flesh. He would have lost his witness. That brother would have seen him the next time. He said, I, he would have seen Elder Barnes, and he would have done it like this now. He would have been walking. And he'll see right here and be like, oh no, I ain't going like that. Because I, I know he laid hands on me last time. And I didn't feel no anointing. <laughs> it was just hands. We need to be mindful that just as others have fallen, so can we. Yeah, just as others have fallen, so can you. And the very moment you put your mouth on somebody, the very moment you put your mouth on somebody, that same thing gonna come back to you. And if it ain't you, it'll be your children. If it ain't your children, it'll be your spouse. It'll come back to you because you put your mouth on somebody else. Yes. Let us never get so high that we forget that we can also fall. How many know that it is only by the grace of God that you and I have not fallen? Every time I see someone that's bound in sin, every time I see someone that has fallen from, from the ministry, I don't cast judgment on them, but I pray for them. Because I understand that the same thing that happened to them can happen to me. And that's why the writer tells us that we need to be mindful. Amen. That, that let, wherefore let him that think it he stand. Notice what it said. Think it that he standing. Yeah, you you standing. I, I got this. I'm standing. He said, you better take heed to the word of God. Amen. That you also might fall too. Amen. Lest you also fall. Paul. Paul understood this. Same apostle one occasion said, except by the grace of God, there go I. And I, I want you to understand that we need to be mindful that we can fall. Even though we're bought by the blood of Jesus, washed in his precious blood, but yet we're walking around in human flesh. Man is made up of a soul, spirit, and flesh. And walking around in this flesh, and it's, the enemy is always pulling on us. This a war, tug of war going on inside of us. A war. Y'all remember how when, when who was it, Jacob and Esau, when they came out, it was like they were wrestling each other. And that's the way it is with us. There's a, a tug of war going on with us. Evil is pulling against good. And, and, and if we're not careful, evil is going to win. Amen. Yes, we need to be mindful of our proclivities. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15 and 10, Paul said, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was in me. Paul understood that, that, that I can't do it on my own. That on my own, I'm going to shipwreck. I'm going to make a mess of my life. If I lean to my own understanding, I'm going to make a mess. 
And that's why the Bible says, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. And what will he do? He will direct your path. Our mind is enmity against Christ. Our mind is contrary to the will of God. And except that's why we must be born again. Because our human flesh will always walk after the flesh. Yes, that's what our human flesh will do. Come, come here, y'all come here again. Both of y'all come here again. I, I want to show you something now. This is what happens in reality. I want y'all get on one side and the other get on the other side. And, and here's what happens. Watch this now. The spirit man is trying to lead. Okay, now I want that for, for the sake of this, Elder Moses is spiritual, but she's going to act carnal today. She's going to act. Notice what I said, act. Act. She's not. She's acting. Acting. Pretending. Not real. Okay, not real. So she's going to walk after the carnal. Now, I don't pretend that, that I, I, because Christ is in me, and spirit dwelleth in me. So, so, so I'm going to walk. I'm going to represent the spirit of God. And, and Elder Barnes going to walk after the spirit. Elder, Elder Moses going to walk after the flesh. So when we both go walk, but let's see who follows who. Look where the, look where the, the carnal man, look where she, going, go, look, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Y'all see what I'm talking about? The carnal mind is enmity against Christ. He will not obey Christ. He will not follow Christ. He will not do what the Lord said. But that spiritual man walk by faith and not by sight. The grass looked green on the other side. But the spiritual man said, every move I make, I'm going to make it in the name of the Lord. I might be sick, but I'm making every move in the name of the Lord. And the Bible said that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighted in his way. That he delighted in God's word. He meditate day and night. This is metro morning bread. This is noonday snack. This is supper and lunch time. Because he's walking after the spirit. You got to walk after the spirit. Your flesh is contrary to the will of God. Your spirit said give. Your flesh says that was sale at JC Penny. And y'all know that saying, it looked good on you. So we go to JC Penny rather than give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down, shaking together, and running over. See, he believed God. He believed God. The carnal man don't believe God. That's why he don't give, because he don't believe God. The carnal man believe in this chair more than he believe in God. I'll prove it to you. The carnal man didn't shut out, fell down. But the carnal man, he got enough sense not to fall here, but he'll fall there because he's depending on himself. But the spiritual man walks by faith and not by sight. I don't have to see it to believe it. I heard God say it, and that settles it. The spiritual man. Hey, thank y'all. Thank y'all. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna try not to use y'all no more. I try to use somebody else. But but that's what it is. There's a war going on between the flesh and the spirit. Paul said, "When I would do good, evil is all around me. I wanna, I wanna give." I want to praise God. I want to serve. But evil is pulling me. See, see. What did I say? Did I say I was going to try? I did say, did I use the word try? Did I? Did I say try to run? 
Did I say I was going to try not to use it? I said try. Did I say try? I think I said try. I, I want to tell the story. Did I say try? I said try. Did come here, come here. I did say try. I said try. I want to make sure. I want to tell the story in the Lord's house now. All right, stand right there. Come here, Elder, 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 Elder Moses. Now, now here's what it is. Turn, turn around this way. Well, yeah, you turn this way. Turn, yeah. All right, you come here. Come here. Now, you turn around and face that way. All right, now, I'm going to. Now, this time, she's going to be the spirit. And the bar is going to act carnal. Act carnal. See, the spirit man is always being drawn to God. He's always, God is always pulling him closer. But that carnal man, that carnal man is always seeking himself. Start seeking. He's seeking what he can gain for himself. Not knowing that the end thereof is death. But that spiritual man, that spiritual man sets her affection on things that are above and not beneath. You see what I'm saying? The spiritual. We're dealing. We're in a war between the flesh, like, between the war, but between the flesh and the spirit. Now, whoever you feed the most, that's who's gonna win. If this become your daily bread, look. Isn't that what he said? Give us our daily bread. Get all the bread we got here to eat. You, you will never go hungry. You will never go hungry if you eat of this bread. But when we don't eat of this bread, it's that flesh that we feed. We feed what our friends say. We feed what those on the job say. We feed what our unsaved relatives say. That's feeding us. And it's pulling us from God. Amen. Lastly, 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 Verse 13, verse 13 says, There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. But God is faithful. Do y'all know that? But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. But we'll with the temptation make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. The good news today is that we can be mindful of God's provisions. Of God's provisions. I know you got your proclivities, but we're talking about God's provision. Tell your neighbor, God has made provisions. Yes, God has made provisions for you and I. Amen. If we are mindful of his word, that God's word teaches us that God is with you in the midst of what you face. In your struggle, God is with you. Don't think you're alone in your struggle, but I thank God that he has given us his spirit to be with us. That where I am, his spirit is also. Amen. It doesn't matter where I go. His spirit is with me. And his spirit is with me to help me in my infirmities. In my weakness, his spirit is with me. And that's why we understand that in our weakness, his strength is made perfect. In, his, in our weakness, God has made provisions for the believer. The one who will believe God and, 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 and take God at his word. Amen. God has made provisions. Look what Peter said. Peter said, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are, that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. How many know that God sees you in your struggle? That you're not going through it by yourself. But many times Satan wants to isolate you and isolate you in your mind and make you think that you're going through this 
on your own. But somebody ought to tell the devil, you are a liar. Because God is with me even in my trouble. Even in my valley, God is with me. How many know that the Bible lets us know that God will never leave you nor forsake you. But you got to know that he's with you. Remember when Paul went to the Lord three times and said, Lord, I need you to take this thing from me. It's more than I can bear. It is weighing me down and hindering me from doing what I need to do. But I thank God that the word came back to Paul and said, Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee. How many know that same grace is on your life? You don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. But every day we get up, God gives us grace. Grace to make it through another day. Grace to face the devil and to resist the temptations of the enemy. Remember when, when the devil came to Jesus and tried to, and did try to tempt him in the wilderness. The Bible lets us know that Jesus stood on the word of God. Anybody going to stand on God's word today? Be mindful of what God has said. But you got to know it for yourself. You can't make it on somebody else's testimony. Huh? You can't make it off what somebody else knows. Huh? But you gotta know it for yourself. Huh? Anybody know him today? Huh? Anybody know God's word? Huh? That God gave us his word. Huh? That when the devil roars up, huh? when the devil comes at you huh? with all that he's got, huh? I need you to know huh? he can't hem you in. Huh? He can't hem you up. Huh? Because God is on your side. Huh? Tell your neighbor I'm not going to stay where I am. God is not going to let me die in this place. I come to tell somebody, God is going to do it in your life. Come here, Nicole. I need to prophesy to you. Come on up here. I'm calling you now. God wants you to know that the devil is trying to pull you from where you are. You know God's word. You heard the word preached in season and out of season. And the enemy is trying to pull you away from God. But I come to tell you. He told me to tell you. He has made a way of escape. Oh yeah. You ain't got to stay in it. But you can get out of it. Right now. You can flee. The Bible said. If you resist the devil. He will flee. I know. The devil looks good sometimes. He dresses up. Put on a suit. And a tie. Puts on a dress. And a blouse. But you better tell that devil. Get thee behind me. I'm running. I'm running. For my life. Your daughter is watching you run. And you can't afford to stumble now. But you better put on your running shoes. I hear God telling the children of Israel. You better get ready. You better get ready. I'm bringing you out. I'm bringing you out. Pharaoh has held it down. But I'm bringing you out. Pharaoh has made it difficult. Pharaoh has weighed you down. But I hear God saying, Moses, Moses, tell Pharaoh to let my people go. I see Moses telling them, get ready, get ready. On the night, on the night, we're going to leave here. Get ready to go. We're going to leave here. Get ready to go. We're going to break camp. Get ready to go. God is bringing you. God is bringing you out, out of everything that's held you bound. Everything that's weighed you down. God is bringing you out. God is bringing you out. That's for you. That's for you to go. The Holy Spirit knows. God is bringing not only her, but 
God is bringing you out. That situation has held you down. That thing that, come here, Angel. The devil said snares. The devil said snares. I want y'all to hear this thing right there. Sometimes he uses people as a snare. Okay. Give me a part of his wife. Give me a part of his wife. Come on, Joseph. You look good, Joseph. Won't you lay with me? You know you want to. He uses people as snares. Come here, Bathsheba. Let me take off my clothes. On the balcony. Let me suntan. No clothes on. Is that David? Let me show him a good side. Let me show him a good side. And sometimes he will use people to become a stumbling block in your life. To hinder you. Because see, the devil knows angel the gifting in your life. He knows what God has uh, conditioned you to do. You know, he knows. So if he can pull you, your purpose is here. That's prophetic. Your purpose is here. That's, that's, yeah, your purpose is here. I don't mean where you're standing, but here. But if the devil can try his best to pull you, and here's what he does. He, he pulls. Look, she ain't going nowhere. Look at that. That girl won't bud. Look at that. Boy, she playing, she playing like a, a tree playing by the rills of water. And shall not be moved. But wait a minute. Come here, Mr. Good Looking. Come here. Come here, Blue Eyes. Come here, Blue Eyes. Now, wait a minute, y'all. She gonna, she gonna tip. She gonna kind of kind of move one foot, kind of see what's going on. Kind of move one foot, move one foot. Oh, I got her now. I got her now, see. I got her now. I got her now. I got her now. I got her now. Oh, I got her now. I can run her up and down. I can run her up and down sideways and back. Because the devil knows. He knows your proclivities. He knows your tendency. He knows. He tries to pull you away from destiny, away from purpose, away from future generations. He's trying to pull you away. But I come to tell you, God made a way of escape. You know, God loved you so much that God won't let you stay where you are without opening, opening your eyes and let you see the way out. Y'all heard that song? I can see my way clear. And that, oh, yeah, or out, whatever it is. Anyway, but, but God allows you to be able to see. So now that you can see, I want you to understand, Angel, you got purpose. And I want to tell you what your purpose is. And I want you to show me how fast you can go to your purpose and get back to your purpose. Your purpose is right here. But you got to go down there to get to it. You got to go down there with, my, with sisters okay. and they got to come back here. <laughs> this what your purpose Your purpose is here now. Your purpose is here. Your purpose is here. This is back where I'm at. This, this is where your purpose is. But God had to take you through something. God had to take you through some stuff to get you back on purpose. Notice what I said, to get you back on purpose. It is God's purpose, not yours. God's purpose to get you back on purpose. All right, girl. That's, thank you, girl. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I'm just telling you that God, you got to you gotta know and be mindful of God's provisions. He's made provisions that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible says that God will lift up a standard against him. So you got to know your purpose. Amen. And how do you know? Be mindful. Be mindful. Be mindful. Rest on your feet, if you will. Amen. Amen. Rest on your feet. Be mindful. The devil is still 
seeking whom he may devour. He wants to destroy you and me. He wants to destroy what's in you and what's coming behind you. But you need to tell him like Jesus, no deal. Amen. God bless you. Maybe there's somebody here today that is not saved. Amen. If you're here and you're not saved and you want to be saved, you want to give your life to the Lord. This is our greatest appeal. The greatest invitation that mankind has ever received is when Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Is there one today that would give your life to Christ? Maybe there's somebody here that said, Pastor, I, I believe I'm saved, but I, I, I've been pulled. I've been pulled away from God. I've allowed my flesh to take advantage of me. And I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. Maybe that's you today. I don't want you to miss that moment. There's something about rededicating your life. It's like renewing your marriage vows. You re reaffirm your commitment to the Lord. If you're here today and you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, the altar is open for you. Amen. You know what you need from God. You know what your heart desire is. David said, one thing about I desire to the Lord, and that will I seek after. Amen. Amen. God bless you. If you desire prayer, the altar is open. Whatever you need from the Lord, amen. Come. Come, the altar is open. Are anointing those that desire to be anointed. Amen. We believe in anointing. Amen. It's the way of our touching and agreeing with you in your request of the Lord. The Bible tells us to make our request known unto God. And I want you to know whatever concerns you, it concerns God. It doesn't matter how little it might seem to you, but if it concerns you, it also concerns God. Amen. We're going to pray now. We're going to pray. As we come boldly to the throne of God that we can find help in our time of need. 
Father, in the name of your son, Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for another day. Another day, Lord, that we have never seen before. Father, we thank you for it. And Lord, we ask you to forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. Of anything we've done, God, that, Lord, that was not pleasing to you, may have been, Lord, things we didn't do that we should have done. Things we did that we should not have done. Whatever it was, God, we ask you to forgive us. And Father, we pray you would strengthen us to be able to, to, to yield to the Spirit. Father, I pray now for everyone that came around this altar, even those, God, that wanted to come but we're not able. I pray, God, in the name of your son, Jesus, I pray, God, that you would meet them, Lord. Meet them, Lord, right where they need you. Father, they need you. They came because they can't do it on their own, Lord. But, Father, we stretch our hand to thee. No other help we know, God. Father, we can't do it by ourselves. The load is too heavy. The road is too long, God. And God, we need your strength. Father, if you strengthen us, we'll be able to make it. I pray, God, that you would give us insight, Lord. I pray, God, that your word will not fall on deaf ears. But God, let us be mindful of your word. Let us be mindful, God, of that which you said on this day. Let us hide your word in our heart, Lord. That we won't sin against you, Lord. And I pray, God, for everyone, God, I pray that you would strengthen them in their spirit, man. Father, I know their flesh is weak. I know their flesh is weak, God, because your word said the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. Father, I pray now that you would strengthen us. Strengthen us all, God, where we need strengthening. Lord, we need you now. I pray, God, that you would regulate minds that are struggling, God. Minds, God, that are wavering, God. Minds, God, that are, are trying to decide, God, how they're going to make it. Lord, give them that assurance. God, give them that blessed assurance, Lord, that your word is true. That you promised us, Lord, that you would be with us always, even to the end of this world. God, we thank you now for ways that are being made right now. We believe you by faith, God. By faith, God, that you're going to do it. By faith, God, you're going to heal our bodies. By faith, God, you're going to open up doors and close doors. God, we believe you now. By faith, God, that you're going to move people out of our life that don't need to be in our life. God, by faith, you're going to bring others in that need to come in. God, we thank you for your word. For your word is true. Your promises are true. God, we thank you now. Have your way around the altar. Minister to our minds. Minister to our hearts and our soul, God. That we know, God, that we need. We need you, Lord. We need you, God. And we can't make it without you. God, I pray for Brother Cole and his family. I pray strength for them, Lord. God, I pray for uh, Brother Elder Thomas Washington's grandson's grand, his grandparents' family. I pray for them today, Lord, and Sister Cora, God, Mother Lynn, God, so many others, Lord, that need you this day. Look on those, God, that may be traveling out of town, God. I pray, Lord, that you would keep them safe. Bring them back home to us, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless our nursing home ministry on today, Lord. Let it be what you want it to be, God. Bless the preacher today, Lord. Bless the residents today, God. Fill the room, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we thank you. We praise you for all that we ask in your son Jesus' name. And we believe it by faith. Let us all say amen. 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 God bless you. My last appeal is if there's someone here that doesn't have a church home, if you believe the Spirit of the Lord has led you here,